Listen to this next part of the training. Understand the options available to you. But my honest advice would be, before you step into the world of custom attribution, get used to using one of the default models, such as Time Decay. You will learn more about your business that way, which is good. Uh, and using a standard model means the training wheels remain on and in turn there's less potential to mess up, which is always nice. Especially if you're not the business owner and you're reporting to someone. Also, if you're heavily biased towards one marketing channel, then going custom might not be, the, might not be that beneficial right now. That said, let's run through creating a bespoke option so you understand uh, what this looks like. In Google Analytics, you can't actually create an entirely custom model from scratch. Instead, you use one of the default models as your baseline, and then you layer your business priorities over the top to make it bespoke to you. You might be thinking, what's the point, especially when there's so many models available out the box? Going bespoke means you can layer on the type of user behavior you value, your optimal conversion window, and other micro conversions that interact with your sales. Simply put, you use the attribution model to prioritize your investment across various marketing channels, and then you monitor how it affects your conversions and sales over time. This is both an art and a science, First, you make a hypothesis based on your current marketing efforts and data, as seen in the multi-channel reports discussed earlier. Then you test some assumptions and you experiment. You might also be thinking, but what do we hypothesize? Um, for example, you might be thinking of pushing paid content on Facebook, but you're unsure of how that will impact your conversions. Uh, or perhaps you want to run more email campaigns, but it takes time and you want to be rewarded for your efforts. You want to extend your display campaigns, adding more budget to your placements, and so on. These kinds of questions can be answered with attribution. But that's enough talk, let's build. So jumping across to analytics and let's create our custom model. So the first step is to select the baseline model on which your custom is going to be built from. I use position-based attribution as the baseline. And you probably sat there thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. You said time decay earlier is my favorite model. Yes, I like time decay as a out-the-box option, but positional is more flexible for getting creative um, when it comes to creating your own model because it's it's easier to get your head around and you can control the, the first touch point which for many people is is obviously important so the first step is to specify the amount of conversion credit based on what you learned earlier in your path lengths and really what you already know about your marketing and your business where to start really does depend on your business but I use 20, 40, 40, uh, which is a good start for distributing credit. So essentially that's 20 for the first touch, 40 shared in the middle touches, and then 40 at the end. Okay, the next step is setting the look back window. And this is where your time lag report comes into play from earlier. Uh, and again, what you already know about your business. So I would take the upper limit, ignoring any outliers, so if your upper limit in the lag reports are say 45 days, excluding any noise, i.e. those very few conversions, then I'd suggest that you set your look back to around 45 days. Next step is adjusting credit based on user engagement, which is, it's a quite a sensitive switch. Time on site as an option is a bit of a problem here. By default, if you visit one page on a website with analytics and then leave, from the perspective of analytics, you bounced and you had no time on the site. Zero. Even if you spent 10 minutes reading the page from top to bottom. Yes, we can add engagement elements, but that's aside from the point here. For most people, it's a bit of a skewed metric. So page depth, it is. But there are no hard feelings. You know, page depth is a decent enough metric on its own. Um, you know, in short, Google Analytics is going to be giving more credit to campaigns and channels that deliver more page views, which is perfectly reasonable to do. Final step, 
hopefully not too much of a head explosion, but let's take it simple to start. So perhaps you want to uh, value a display campaign more by giving credit to impressions. So therefore we set the interaction type that exactly matches an impression. We then assign that interaction a credit. Uh, this is where the art meets the science. You have to test these things. I'd recommend starting with credits of between 1.2 to 1.5. So you don't, you don't too heavily bias your actions here. A few other examples to feed your ideas and thought process on this final step. Consider the impact of brand campaigns and reducing their credit taken, uh, particularly at the late stage. Do you credit a first touch advert impression with more or less? Think about how social media in the early touch works for your business. Do you assign less or more credit? Should you be crediting ad clicks more in the middle of the path? Uh, perhaps your promo emails need more late stage credit too. You can be more specific and granular, so find the conversion rate of return visitors with one previous visit and give that first visit channel more credit. For example, if you find that organics um, providing that first touch and the subsequent, subsequent touch is producing a, a conversion rate that's above the average. Um, another more technical one is you can calculate late stage organic traffic that's branded and perhaps reduce the credit for that. This example is tricky because of the not provided data in your analytics, but you can look at your PPC data if you're bidding on brand to find a percentage, a yardstick to use. Perhaps you lower the credit of late stage direct traffic. I mean, that's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So your last touch direct traffic could have a credit of 0.8, for example, or even you know half a credit. Like I say, lots to hypothesize about, but you, you've just got to test. There are a few steps to, to take to ensure an agreeable outcome for your custom model. And number one is you create your hypothesis based on the analysis in the previous chapter for how better to allocate budget across your marketing channels. So again, looking at your multi-channel funnels and, know, and understanding what you currently do as a business. And number two, you, you've got to test that hypothesis using a, a percentage of your marketing budget and measure the results, of course. And number three, you will, with time, become more accurate in your marketing channels. And this in turn will benefit your business in terms of performance, your budget allocation and down the line, your bottom line. Just remember this analysis is not a one and done exercise, so you should always be doing this. If you're gonna use a, a custom model, um, in fact, if you're gonna use any of the attribution models, it means that you don't have to check these things on a daily basis, but if you're gonna commit, you should be checking every few weeks or at least once per month, depending on the size of your business and how much traffic that you get. If this is all a bit overwhelming at this stage, then don't worry, you don't have to use a custom model today, but it's always good to, to know and understand the options available to you here. So start by comparing a default model, get comfortable and go from there. Walk before you can run.